Today we'll be looking at Shiny 3D's answer to a budget-friendly and accurate 3D scanner to add to your toolbox, the Einstar Scanner. If you're new here, my name's Dave, and in between Adventures in the Mountains and telling Nico to stop barking at cows, uh, I do a lot of DIY projects which I end up giving my designs away for free on here on the channel. With over 20 years using various CAD programs, getting something like a 3D scanner and adding that to my arsenal only made sense. With companies like Send, Cut, Send, programs like Fusion 360 and good old YouTube, anyone could step up their projects in their garage. I've wanted a scanner for years, but I couldn't justify spending eight to 10 grand for just garage hobbies and all the other ones that were under a thousand bucks seemed more like toys and didn't have the accuracy I was looking for. The Einstar just seemed to check all the boxes I was looking for in a price point I could afford. And just to note, this is not a sponsored video. I did pay full price for the Einstar on Amazon. So this will be my honest review of the scanner and how I think it'll help me with projects like my Sequoia when I go to design a rear bumper for it. <laughs> Now plugging it in and turning it on is pretty straightforward. So what you'll do is you'll end up taking a scanner and the USB port and plug that in. On the USB there's actually this little port that you plug in a power supply to. That way it powers the scanner separately. Now the scanning is pretty straightforward. All you want to do is go until it checks all the green boxes. The display on the program is really nice. So I've read it's best to calibrate this thing each time you change lighting conditions. If I was scanning inside my house and now scanning out in the garage, this would be something that I'd want to recalibrate. I plan to start doing a rear bumper and tire carrier for the Sequoia, so I figured this was going to be a perfect project for the scanner. It would have taken a long time to accurately draw all the contours and the angles and getting all the measurements right for the frame, the body, and the brackets, getting it all aligned in Fusion 360. This is where things like the scanner will just save a lot of time. Now when you work with the 3D scanner, they don't like big broad surfaces and shiny surfaces. So the more dull you can make it, or in my case actually rust and dirt, helps the scan. Now while you can use markers for your scans to kind of help locate across big bodies, I have a lot of angles here, so I'm able to capture features and it's able to track accordingly. For a lot of shiny surfaces, they do make a scanning spray. Uh, it does cost a little bit more, but what's nice about that is when you spray it on, it evaporates over time, so you don't have to clean it up afterwards. Second option would be to use a foot powder spray. That's another economical solution. I'm doing a third option, which consists of baby powder. So you do one part baby powder to about four parts alcohol and put it in a spray bottle. And when you spray it on, the alcohol will evaporate leaving behind the baby powder. So that way you can kind of get a nice even coverage. So now that we got our baby powder on, you can see it's now a nice dull finish. So this is what the scanner loves to see. All right, so once you're ready to start a scan, you're gonna click into new project group. I'll just call this Sequoia Rear. And you have the options of portrait. I've never done that. I was actually reading that somebody got better tracking with portrait, but I'm going to stick with object, uh, medium and large objects. You could go into small for smaller components. Features, texture alignment. Uh, we're just going to do features because I am not going to be using markers for this. Since this is going to be a larger scan, I'm actually going to probably go up to two millimeters. Since this is a pretty big surface, two millimeters is still gonna give us all the accuracy we need. Uh, the lower you go, the more detailed it will be, but it takes a lot more RAM to uh, handle. I'm gonna do two and now I'll be safe and I'll be able to render it into a mesh fairly easily. So we'll go with that. I'm gonna keep off texture scan. Uh, I don't need the colors on there. Go to apply. So on the left side here, you can do your brightness. This thing does work off ambient light. So having more light or light sensitivity will help. Uh, working distance, since we're doing a big truck, I'm just gonna go the full distance on everything. That way it's able to track things a little further away. And then the data quality indicator. As you're scanning, it'll go from poor quality on red, and then it'll go into a green. And once it hits green, you know that all the information it needs. So. Get your scanner and you have three buttons on the back here. Uh, middle will get you into your preview mode. So you can see now on the screen that there's a preview and this is where you would adjust your brightness if you need to. 
And on the left side there, you want to keep it in that green range. So that is just whether you're too close or too far. So you want to try to keep it in the green the best you can. Then you have the top and bottom buttons here, which just zoom in. So if I click on the top button to zoom in, it zooms in my screen and then I could zoom back out. And then the middle button, you're gonna hit it again to start your scan and then hit it again to stop your scan. So let's get to it. There are gonna be times when it loses the tracking and you'll get little pieces like these two bolt heads. So you'll wanna pause your scan and use the tools down below. And they have a few different ones. I usually use the lasso tool like this. And you'll just circle it and make sure you deselect the items you don't. And it'll go through your entire view. So what you'll wanna do is then control and click and lasso the areas you want to unselect. And then once you're done with that, you're going to hit the delete. Then it pulls those scans away. So you will have to watch whenever it loses tracking, make sure that that doesn't happen. You will get some rogue pieces. Yeah, so just make sure you keep an eye on it. And then once you clean it up, just continue your scan like you did before. So I feel like I got a pretty good scan. Oh, I'm gonna use baby powder. I feel like I got a pretty good scan of the frame. I do wanna do a second scan with my hatch in there just so I can get reference for when building a rear bumper. Ultimately, I like to put all these together and have one complete model of my car, but that'll take a lot more scans. But that's also why I'm doing that two millimeter resolution rather than, you know, I could have gone down probably to 1.5, but this will let me do the whole thing and be able to mesh it as one and not slow down Fusion 360 too much. So now I want to start a second scan on top of this. So I'll generate the point cloud to end this scan. You can go back and optimize it later once you get all your scans together, if you need to. Some people, when they optimize it, it actually will remove points that they actually wanted. And I think once you optimize it and it removes those points, you can't get them back. So once you stop the scan, uh, it generates the point cloud. And you can see if I zoom in, it does all the little points. <laughs> Don't know if you hear the dogs. So this is the two millimeter. It still has all the definition of everything. So I will make sure on anything I plan to connect to, I will manually measure those just to double check, make sure I get it spot on. Uh, I will actually overlay here. I did originally try this as a half millimeter, but on the two scans, it just didn't like exporting. So it kept giving me this error. So this is my second scan and I'm doing it at two millimeter, which you can see it does catch all the definition. You can see all the spot welds, all the divots, everything like that. This still looks really good. So once your scan looks good, you can go on the left side here to this project group. And this is where you can do multiple scans. So you could open if you had any others, remove them, delete them. Removing them just takes it off of this project group. Deleting them just, it deletes the scan completely. So you do have the option to rename these and I can call this rear frame. And this will help you keep track of all your different scans. So you can do new project. So I'm going to do the same settings. I'm going to do features. I'm going to hit apply to new project. So if you look in project group, it does say project two, and that's the one I'm actively in. It does hide temporarily your other one, which is okay. And then we're gonna do the scan, same exact thing. Now we got the rear hatch in, so looks good. That's all I need just for reference. So when you do multiple scans, you wanna make sure you get shared geometry. So in this case, I'm using the cross member as that, and that's gonna help us align the multiple scans into one when I go to mesh it. So now we got all of our scanning done. Uh, we're going to take it inside the house and I'll show you how to align them and export the mesh. All right, so now on the computer, you could see we got our hatch in. Uh, like I said, the scanner does not like to pick up shiny things or clear things. So windows usually don't like to pick up unless they're dirty like mine, but things like taillights and stuff like that, you usually need to do like a 
some kind of spray over the top of it just to make it so it's not transparent. So once you get your scan in, it will automatically turn off the opposite scan. So if we turn that back on, you'll see it doesn't line up. So the align tool in this XStar program is actually really good. So if you go into align, they do have a feature auto align and a feature manual align where you'll select some points. The auto align is pretty good. So I've had good luck just selecting that one. So on this left side, they have the fixed window. It doesn't really matter if you have two, you just want to keep the same consistent one and the fixed one. And then if you have multiple scans, more than two, you would just keep them so in our case we'll start with the rear frame in the fixed and then now we want the floated one down here the rear hatch so all we're gonna do is it says make sure there's enough shared areas between the models so that's why I did that cross member so in theory it's going to detect this cross member and line it up with that cross member and that did not work <laughs> this it flipped it upside down let's try cancel so we'll go into the feature manual align so this one it wants you to kind of give it three points for it to reference so we'll just pick three different points on both that will give it something to match we'll do this back one here it just needs to kind of match the same spot so we can go here here and third bolt to there and then do apply and it should line all three up now you see the nice zebras in there that means it's aligned so now this will give me the inside of the hatch as well as the hatch door for when i do my bumper so now that we got it aligned it's looking good we want to mesh the model and right now at the point cloud you can't really do much with it. If the scan is too much for your computer to handle on the mesh, you can save each of these scans separately and bring them into a program like Mesh Lab. It's easier to keep it all in one program, but if you have those hangups, Mesh Lab does a little better job and won't crash on you. It's more steps and Mesh Lab's a tricky program. So once we get everything, we'll go into Mesh Model and we're gonna have Shining 3D do as little as possible. Going low. Uh, smooth low simplification sure keep it there we'll try that triangles you can adjust it once you run the mesh on here if you don't like how it looks you can redo it it'll keep the it'll just keep basing it off the same point cloud so we'll take off remove spike take off fill small holes so sometimes you'll have like little tiny holes or like if you had markers or something like that so you get to kind of see this little flap here it would try to autofill those holes. I don't want it to do any of that. I don't want it to do extra processing or assume where there is a hole that should be filled. So we're just going to go and apply. And you'll watch the memory start spiking up as this thing meshes. This is a fairly large scan. I can usually mesh one of these at a time. It's when I put two of them together. That's when it gets to be a lot of points. I do have the option to remove some points, especially like on this frame. Now that it's aligned, I could probably go through and delete a lot of this stuff. Uh, same with some of the remnants like underneath. I don't need the spare tire in there. I'm gonna go through and try to clean up this point cloud a little bit and remove all the stuff that I don't need. Uh, it's just, it's more points. Like I don't need everything underneath the car. So I'm gonna go through and clean that up and then we'll give it another whirl. It worked. <laughs> Ironically, I got an error that said insufficient memory and I hit okay and then it ran through it again and it worked. So I was dumb though. I had my laptop plugged in, in the back of the laptop and in the wall. During the previous mesh, it said that I was at 40% battery and it was going to super battery mode. So I realized the power adapter plug was unplugged from it. So plug that in. 
meshed it and it worked. Whether that helped or not, or if it was just thinning down the model, but yeah, it worked, so. <laughs> Let me know if you want me to make a video on if you have to do it in separate pieces and bring it into Mesh Lab. I could export the point clouds if you can't mesh it and bring that into Mesh Lab and show you how I would do it that way. But for this one, it does work, so we're gonna move forward with this. If you click on the measurement tab here, you have an option for measurement tools. So I did measure these two brackets. It's around 48 and three quarters. If I take these millimeters, convert it, it's 48.85, so it matches up. We know the scale's right, it didn't stretch anything out. So we do have options to try to align this thing to the UCS. There's a channel that I'll link below, learn everything about design. He does a lot of Fusion 360 tutorials. He does really thorough breakdowns, but he goes into aligning your models to the UCS. As you can see, the X and the Y is a little funky so there's options that you create a ucs based off of planes and lines and features on your model he does a much better tutorial on that but the premise is you go into it put in a point which is supposed to be your zero zero so we don't have any line i'd like the bottom here but i do want this surface to be it so let's just give that a point Create, we'll do a line. So we wanna find something, let's find something that's horizontal. We'll try to follow the hitch here. Point to point, from here to here. Create, and then now we'll give it a plane. We'll do three point fit. Let's try to do the top of this plate here. Two, point. Three point one create close move three to one point system point one line one plane one move and that actually lined us up good we just want to flip the Z minus here Z plus, and that will move us around, kinda. Let's see, top view, X and Y, so we actually want the line, instead of X negative, we want that as the X positive, and that should flip us the other way. So now we should be lined up on the X, Y, Z. So if we do close, now we see our X, Y, Z here. If I go to front view, if I go to a top view, go to a side, and this will give us a good starting point for when we bring it into Fusion. So now we'll save our scan. What's nice about Fusion 360 is it is a free program uh, for hobby use. If you're doing commercial use, you do have to pay, but for the general hobby at home DIYer, it is completely free. So if we have a new file here, we'll see what our mesh looks like if we bring it in. See how it comes in now that we put in the coordinates in the XStar program. So when you bring it in as inches, you do want to measure and double check that it's scaling it correctly. We're going to keep it exactly as it is and see how good our XYZ is. So now if I go into the front view, it's lined up. Top view, lined up. So I could get finer detail if I did that one or half millimeter. Uh, since this is on two, that's why you see it a little off, but all that I will measure. This at least gives me a good placement for all of my, my frame and just general location of the body. So that way I can start designing my bumper. All right, that's gonna be my review for the Einstar scanner. As you can see, I did run into some issues. Some of that is just computer hardware, which I kind of stay at the beginning. 
that's a known issue. I'm gonna link down below that learning everything about design channel as well as a video from Superfast Matt and Making for Motorsports. They did some really good reviews as well. I'm also gonna link down a Facebook group for the Einstar Scanner. A lot of people post their projects that they scanned and they'll say what their settings were and then what a lot of people ask what their computer hardware is. So that's a good thing. Even, I mean, if you don't have the scanner, check it out, see what other people are doing. And if you want me to do that video on how to align things and, and add multiple point clouds into MeshLab and export it that way, I will have to do that because I do plan to do my entire Sequoia in one. I do think it'd be fun to scan the whole thing, assemble it, and make a little Hot Wheel size car. Even if I can pull off the body and add it to a Hot Wheels car, um, that'd be fun because they don't make one for the Sequoia. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.